Hey guys, my name's Sully, and today I've got some more helicopter footage for you, just uh, to give you some background insights on how to be a better helicopter pilot, this time on Paracel Storm. Uh, the whole point of this series of videos is going to be uh, talking through the gameplay and talking about what decisions I made, why I was making them, and uh, talking about the mistakes I made as well. On this round in particular, as I mentioned, we were on Parasol Storm, and our team was down constantly 100, 125, 150 tickets even throughout the game. Uh, the other team's vehicles were dominant, which is a problem on Paracel if your team isn't strong and certainly isn't making use of their vehicles. The combat boats, the scout helicopters, particularly the extra scout helicopters, can wreak havoc, and that's exactly what was happening here. Now right there, we had just uh, downed the other scout helicopter, uh, as well as its pilot in the water who bailed, and now we're running away from the attack boat because those guys can mess you up, especially if they're facing towards you. Uh, between their primary, uh, if they have a tow missile, if they've got a... Uh, TV guided or their gunners on the back, they're going to mess you up. Now here I saw another helicopter coming in, try to take it out, but he rams me. Oh, um, yeah. And that's a good example of why it's good to be high when at all possible above your uh, opponents. The higher the better. Also want to make sure that you're not capping objectives, which I wasn't trying to do there. So I uh, waited a little bit, uh, got back in our little bird and got into the action. And true to form, like the rest of the map, uh, the other team had just complete run of the middle here, the middle islands with their attack boats, and if they get their attack boats in there, they're going to cut off your infantry lanes and your rib boats. It's going to be hard to get between um, get between islands. So that's why here I decided to take on that boat. He's on our side of the island, he's exposed, and he's in a very, very crucial position for us to get between C, our give me point, and B. Uh, now the one thing is, once they have a levolution that happens, and this uh, cruiser comes in, there's going to be a anti-air gun on there, which is important to have, which is actually messing me up here. Um, so I wanted to make sure you clear off the deck there, um, and keep on doing these circles, so you can avoid the AA gun uh, just shredding you. So after clearing off the deck, I look down, I see that there's a number of our teammates on C, so there's really no use for me to be there. So we'll head over to D and see if we can't push them back a little bit. Now, I get overextended here and a little greedy going for this rib boat in the water, and I lose focus on my target priority, because what I don't see to my left there on the radar is the other scout helicopter coming in, and this is bad news. Because I don't finish my kill on the rib boat, and now I've got both the rib boat gunner and the attack helicopter to deal with. Luckily here, I get a couple of good first heat seekers off, because if you're at a short enough distance, uh, and the helicopter pilot's getting a little excited, he might forget to pop his ECM. Um, and I was lucky here, to be quite honest. Um, I believe we, our AA gun kind of helped him a little bit from C. Uh, but a good example of still, even though if you get into a fight and it's not ideal, you can still try to fight your way out of it if you stay focused. Make sure you're not burning through your ammo. So by the time we get back to sea, there are guys again on the deck, and as a scout helicopter, that's really my duty to help my team stay out of that fire and clear the deck, which is what I do there. So now with the defensive D that I just did, and then the defensive C again twice, we've got some momentum, and we're capping B, so I head on over there. Now this can be risky, if particularly when I didn't know where the AA gun is, and I'm getting messed up by something here, and that possibly could be it. Um, but I still wanted to make sure I was helping my team uh, getting those infantry people in the collapsed buildings, particularly this guy right here. And that's always an important thing to keep in mind, no matter what vehicle you're in. What can you do well that your teammates on the ground or teammates in other vehicles can't? And in this situation on Paracel, you can get the rib boats, you can get the helicopters, and you can also keep infantry out of the buildings and destroy those buildings and out of the trenches. As the combat at B kind of dragged me out to sea towards their no man's land island, I noticed two guys on the minimap. One was a sniper, not too much of a problem, but the other one actually was an engineer with a lock-on missile, a stinger, and uh, he was the one who kept on locking on to me for the last like 15-20 seconds of this video. So that was good to kind of get him off my back, but once that was done, again, I was overextended, learned my lesson earlier in the map, and I got the heck out of dodge there. And by that time, my scout helicopter, and as well as, of course, a team that kind of woke up, uh, oh actually helped to build a lot of momentum. The fact that I was keeping the vehicles off my team's back, allowing them to actually cap objectives meant here that by the end of the map we had completely reversed our deficit and we had actually had them five capped. So once again we were down at least 150 early on consistently for the first half of the map. But once we kind of got it together and um, added some value in the form of the scout helicopter, we were able to turn the tide and win. And so that's it guys. If you liked the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up below. Leave your comments, let me know your thoughts, and uh, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this from Scout Helicopters, as well as some infantry action and um, some fun squad up footage. So until next time, guys, see you later.